I started my essay by saying, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. This is what Rosa Parks said. The problem is <laughs> Rosa Parks did not say that. <laughs> Another very famous civil rights activist named Fannie Lou Hamer said that. Hello, hello, everyone. Bom, vamos lá. A promoção ainda tá rolando. Você ainda tem o dia 7 de julho para aproveitar. Vá lá no Cambly.com ou no aplicativo do Cambly. Não precisa colocar cartão de crédito, nada. Qualquer nível é... Quer dizer, qualquer nível pode fazer <risos> o Cambly. Então, você que quer aproveitar um desconto de 47% em qualquer plano anual deles, vá lá no Cambly.com, no aplicativo do Cambly, coloca seu e-mail, coloca esse cupom direitinho no ICRU 47 OFF. Desse jeito, você vai ganhar esse desconto e uma aula de graça, caso você ainda não tenha descoberto o Cambly. Uma coisa importante, caso você já tenha feito, você pode aproveitar a promoção de qualquer jeito, tá? Não é... como é que se diz? Não é uma coisa anula a outra. Você pode fazer de qualquer forma. E você que conhece alguma kid, uma criança entre 3 a 14 anos de idade, aproveita e dá essa promoção para eles também. No ICRU 47 OFF, Kids, que é o nome do cupom, tá bom? Isso vale muito a pena, vai dar um gás maravilhoso nessa criança que você vai estar presenteando com esse descontão e depois conta pra gente. Now, on with the show! Hello, hello, hey, Alexia, how are you doing? I am fine. Happy Tuesday. Happy, happy Tuesday. So, this week on English no Kruhaju, we were going to start this on Monday, but Alexia had the sweet idea of talking about Saint Juan, which I thought was very cool. And so, this week, we wanted to talk about being sick. Mm hmm. I'm waiting for your story. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Every episode of English no Kruhaju, Alexi and I talk about something and then I have a crazy idea where I'm like, oh no, I'm going to tell you a story or I'm <laughs> going to give you this crazy exercise. And I don't tell Alexia because I think it's funny. And then she just gets really nervous and waits <laughs> for me. So why do we want to talk about being sick this week? First, Alexia, you've been a little sick the last few days. Mm-hmm. Very and sick. Secondly, I cut my finger with a knife. Yes, it did. I was cutting carrots. <laughs> and then we experienced an emergency here in Portugal for the first time. Yeah, I would say Portuguese urgent care. Yeah. Which was wonderful. Very sweet doctors and nurses who I could not really understand at all. <laughs> But that's why we want to talk about being sick. So, Alexia, I want to talk first. I want to tell you a story. And I'm not sure if you know this story. Okay. Are you ready? I think so. Okay. So, there's a famous phrase in English. And it goes like this. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Do you understand that? I do. What does it mean to you? Eu tô de saco cheio de ficar, de estar... De saco cheio e cansado. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't really translate that well, I guess. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Sim. In English, that is so perfect because you're saying, if you were sick and tired of something, that just means, eh, let's study saco cheio. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But in English, you can literally say that you are sick and tired But here, this is the reason this is a, a great phrase. It's because you're saying I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. So então, you understand the saco cheio de estar de saco cheio. It's something like that. Yeah, but in the first part, the person who said this quote is saying that I am figuratively sick and tired. So I'm not actually sick. I'm just annoyed, I have had enough, I don't want to take it anymore, of being physically sick and physically tired. Okay. Okay. 
So you understand the quote now? I do. Okay. So when I was in seventh grade, which means I was, eh, let's say 12, 11, 12, 13. No. And I took my first keyboarding class, which was a typing class, Mm -hmm. which is crazy now because nowadays, like three-year-olds know how to use iPhones. That's true. But when I was in middle school, we actually had a class to teach us how to type. Me too. Yeah, you too? Yeah. Yeah. We had aula de eletrônicos. Yeah. And then it was a computer, a very old computer, of course, with a keyboard. And we had to to learn how to do everything. Yeah. We just called it keyboarding. Yeah. A little bit easier. So in keyboarding class, on a cold February morning, <laughs> my keyboarding teacher, who honestly I can't remember her name at all, wasn't particularly memorable, but February in the U.S. is Black History Month. Did you know that? No. Yes. So Too cold. Too cold? Uh-huh. Too cold for what? Weather. Too cold. Too cold weather. for... Weather. The weather's too cold. Yeah. Too cold for you to re- remember I don't know, African-American Amor. You American just history? asked me, like, do you know what this means? I'm just saying, too cold, maybe. <laughs> Okay, when in doubt, just scream too cold. <laughs> so every February, Amo, is Black History Month in the U.S. So we designate one month each year to celebrate African-American history in ah. the U.S. Yeah. Okay, it's very, very deeper. It is much deeper than I just it was you a being weather. too cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, so back to the story. In my keyboarding class... One day in February, our keyboarding teacher told us that we had to enter a contest for Black History Month. You understand a contest, right? Mm Mm-hmm. With the entire school, and we had to write an essay, a short paper, on one figure from Black American culture, Black history, that was important for America. And obviously, this was just a way for kids to practice their typing abilities. And every day in keyboarding class, we never had anything to do. So I think it was like, yeah, let's just enter the black history competition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I decided to choose Rosa Parks. Have you ever heard of her? No. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Ask me about Brazilian history. (laughs) Neymar. <laughs> so Rosa Parks was, you probably know her story, but in the 1950s and 60s, especially in the late 60s, when segregation was still a really big thing in the U.S., uh, African Americans were not allowed to sit on the front of the bus. Mm-hmm. So they could only sit on the back of the bus. And one day, Rosa Parks. I know her. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you don't really no, know her. No, 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 no. I remember her. her yeah. There is a movie that someone calls her. Um, okay, go ahead. Yeah. The Helper. The Help. The Help. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, so one day Rosa Parks said, F this, I'm going to sit on the front of the bus. This is stupid. Why did we have to sit on the back of the bus? And she knew very, very well that she would be arrested if she sat on the front of the bus. People asked her to move, and she just sat there quietly until she was arrested. And that made national news, and it was one of the biggest parts of the civil rights movement in the U.S. that this sweet old lady was sent to jail simply for sitting on the bus. So I wrote a short essay about her. I did not do much research. And I started my essay by saying, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. This is what Rosa Parks said. The problem is (laughs) Rosa Parks did not say that. (laughs) Another very famous civil rights activist named Fannie Lou Hamer said that. So that is the first problem. The second problem in this story is we had a Black History Month 
celebration in the gym. And imagine this, Alexia. I went to a high school that had 1,200 students. And I would say 80% of them are African American. Mm -hmm. And we are on the Black History Day celebration. We only have one a year. And they say, and now we're going to talk about our Black History essay competition. And I was like, oh, yeah, that thing we had to do for keyboarding class. Yeah, that was that was a terrible essay I wrote. And they said, like, the third best essay is da-da-da, da-da, the second best, whatever. And everyone claps. And they said, the best essay writing about Rosa Parks so eloquently. Oh, no, it was Foster you. Foster Hodge. Foster, come down. And everyone was clapping. And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> and I had to go down accept my award they gave me like a 50 dollars gift certificate to best buy or something and i had to say something about rosa parks and i was just like thank you in front thank of you. everyone in it's front of a years old. predominantly african-american population when i already knew that my essay not only was really bad but was factually very very incorrect <laughs> And to this day, I still feel really, really bad about it. No, you shouldn't have more. First of all, you were 12 years old. I mean. I was 12 years old, but I did not research my facts. I plagiarized. I am. (sighs) But then you learned that you shouldn't do that anymore. Hey, guys. Foster here. So we ran into some technical difficulties at the end of this episode which means our recording device immediately shut down we lost power at our house and they started doing some crazy construction so anyway i hope you enjoyed the at least the beginning of a funny and embarrassing story from my childhood And as always, if you want to stay in the loop and stay updated with what we are doing, check out EnglishNewCrew.com. A lot of cool things going on there. Okay, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Ciao.